Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Brains and Beauty. I'm a PhD student studying brains and also a beauty lover. And today I want to do an in-depth review for you guys on the new Glaminatrix formula. So I purchased the Silent Night palette in the fall and as soon as it launched and it arrived to me in January of 2022. And then in February as part of my theme to shop my stash. Um, so basically I pick a theme each month and I focus on a minimalistic group of products. So my only focus palette for the month of February was the Silent Night palette for the theme of the Queen because there are some really beautiful jewel tones in this palette. So because of that I was able to play with this a lot and I have a lot of eye looks that I will share with you today. Now I follow Glaminatrix on Instagram and they did say that all the shimmers and mattes in this palette are a new formula and this formula is what's going to be used from now on in their future palettes like the nocturnal palette or the news that they're planning to release in the summer. So we'll start off the video by talking about the formula in this palette. Um, I'm going to go in depth and show you my experience as well applying these to my eyes and then we'll do um, like color comparisons and I'll compare these to other eyeshadows in my collection and lastly we'll talk about um, the customer service type of experience. So I'm going to cover everything related to this in this video so let's just get right into it. Okay so first some general comments about the mattes. So these three mattes really drew me into this palette because they are such beautiful, rich, jewel tone mattes. And I think the first thing that I was wondering about when I bought this palette, but I was seeing just like the initial pictures that were just from Glaminatrix, I was wondering how deep these shades really are. Because in some pictures like this, you can see that they look really black and like the contrast between these colors and the shimmers, they look super deep. But then in other lightings, and I think you can kind of see it when it's not in the shade, they look kind of bright. So I was like, how deep are these really? So I can confirm now that these are deep shades. It's just that they are vibrant deep shades. Like you know how there are some pastels that are like muted pastels, they're just like light colors, but they're not vibrant. And then there are other pastels that are like vibrant pastels. These are vibrant deep shades. So when you put these on the eyes, they're not going to just turn into like a very black or a blackened color. Instead, they're going to maintain their color, but it's, it's definitely going to be a smoky eye if you put this all over the lid. Another general comment on the matte formula is that when you touch it, it's not creamy like, for example, the Natasha Denona mattes, if you've touched those. It's just a regular powder feeling eyeshadow. Now, one of the posts that was back in the fall that I remember Glaminatrix made was that they were saying they changed the matte formula so that it wouldn't cause as much kickback in the pan. And I can confirm I didn't have any issues with the mattes um, having any kickback. So I can show you right now how much is picked up on the brush. So you can see when I very lightly tap my brush in, I'm not picking up too much. When I tap it in more, I get a good amount. And then when I swirl the brush in the pan, I'm not getting much kickback, but I can like fully coat the brush. So I want to show you this using the orange because I feel like you can really see the orange on this black brush. And there is the orange blended on the skin. So another thing I actually wanted to demonstrate about the mattes is that, especially with the deeper shades, it's more of a buildable formula. And so what I noticed was that if I was using a fluffy blending brush, I wasn't able to get the depth that I desired or what I saw in the pan. I needed to use either this small blending brush. Because it's small, the bristles are more dense. So this is the e.l.f. Detail Crease Brush. Or I'd go in with like a true kind of um, packing brush for the outer corner, so this e.l.f. Contour Brush. But when I went in with like the crease brush, this more fluffy type of brush, it really wasn't able to build that kind of depth. And I do have some dark matte shades in my collection where just like using a big fluffy brush works to build depth. But because these are more the type that need to be packed on to really see that depth, I found that um, I wasn't able to get the depth with this, but only was able to with either like packing on with my finger 
or with this contour brush or with a very small blending brush. So let me show you what I mean with the shade stocking. Do you see how with the first layer it's very much a kind of light dusting of the red? And now it's a bit more opaque. So we're getting to four layers and I'm starting to get the depth, but it's still... So that's five layers now. So you can see that depth now. If we were to go in with the contour, do you see immediately how deep that gets compared to using a fluffy brush? So there you go, that is the depth that you can get with the mattes. Another thing that I noticed with these mattes, because they are quite pigmented, um, usually I just clean my brushes by like swirling them either on the back of my hand to get the rest of the product off or on a napkin. And these do take a lot more swirls <laughs> to get all the product off than typically my other shadows. So they are quite pigmented. So let me swatch out the other two, just because it's faster to get the full depth by swatching. They are soft. And the blue out of all the colors, I would say, is the deepest. And also what I really like is mistletoe is a true green. I was kind of wondering, like, is it going to be one of those tealy greens? But no, it's, it's very much a true green. I'm going to go over the other mattes with my finger as well. And I don't know if you can see, but even like the center where the most pressure on my finger was is deepest in color. So really, if you want to get a really deep smoky eye, I would suggest using your finger to apply these on the lid. And I did that in one of the looks. So these are how the shades look. I have fair olive skin um, and the last comment I'm going to make uh, more generally about this formula is that I did notice with the blue because I used it as a liner so I mixed it with some Ingot Duraline and when you do mix it with that sort of product it does become a lot more like a blackened color so it became more of a black and blue. So we've gone over the matte formula in general and now I want to talk about the specific colors. The red shade I do really like but I kind of expected more of a true red while this leans more as a blue toned red. But that's why it's actually so amazing that this orange shade was included in the palette. So for the shade gingerbread I had actually said in a wishlist video I'm not a huge fan of oranges I didn't feel like I needed this. Um, I even think that I would have preferred something like like a, a light yellow and maybe call it like eggnog or something. So that was what I would have done if I was creating the palette. But now that I actually have this shade and that I use it with the other colors, I really understand why having this shade in the palette was a really good idea. And I, actually that's like what drew me to the brand to begin with. For the You Beauty palette, I adore how the color story works together in the palette. Like it's not screaming at you primary shades but because it has those shades that are really close to primary like this is not a yellow but it's orange so it has a little bit of that power to change the other colors and give you more colors so one of the more obvious ones i think is being able to take this more blue toned red and turn it into a neutral red by layering both of these together so you can get kind of a bright neutral red look out of this so let me show you. I hope you can start to tell the undertone difference between these two on camera. So this one's just a lot more blue toned and this one has definitely become neutralized. So that's one really nice way of using the orange in the palette. So I've just wiped off my brush and I want to show you another mixture that I really loved using on my eyes. So you can actually create 
a really beautiful grungy olive. So first start with the mistletoe shade. And then you want to take the orange and do a good layer of the orange over the green. So as you can see, we're starting to create this beautiful olive shade. Now one thing that I am noticing on my hand is it does look like um, like there's a bit of powder kind of flying everywhere, but that's not something that I experienced on my eyes. There was only once where I had a bit of like fallout from the mats like a little bit below my eye, but that was because I was really like I was doing a full rainbow smoky eye and I was packing it on a lot. So that's another thing. Just If you just go like a little bit at a time, I didn't experience any fallout in any of my other eye looks. So um, I think here, because I'm really like dipping back and forth and not really like paying attention to how much I'm picking up, you may see a little bit of powder kicking around. But yeah, I just wanted to note that. And mind you, there's no primer on my hand right now. So when I do blend these on my crease, I have my Urban Decay Primer on my lids. But yeah, basically, I think you see the gist of it. You get a really beautiful olive by pairing these two shades. And then I think the last um, way that you can combine the colors within the palette is to make a purple. So I was actually really looking forward to make a deep purple using the red and the blue. So I was able to make a more cool toned purple um, when I went heavier with the blue than the red. And when I went heavier with the red than the blue, I was able to make a warmer purple. So in that eye look, I actually took the stocking red shade all over the crease and then only took the blue on the outer corner to make a little bit of a warm purple in the outer corner. Everything in that look, I used this Glaminatrix palette. I did have a custom like supplementary palette in the month of February to see how these shades play with other eyeshadows in my collection. That was this custom palette because, you know, the queen has to have her jewels. And so um, the Picture Fame palette that I created had all of these jewel tones in it. So for the first eye look I showed on the screen, I had stocking in the crease um, and then slay in the outer corner. And then I had tinsel all over the lid and fairy lights in the inner corner. And then for the look where I had more of a cool tone purple, I had these two both mixed throughout the entire crease. And then I had um, this purple, blue, periwinkle kind of multi-chrome all over the lid. And I had gilding from Cleona in the inner corner. And then in a more like emerald, olive green eye look, I put mistletoe all over the crease. And then on the inner part of the crease, I had a very light layer of mistletoe. I went in with like, I packed in the gingerbread orange shade. And then I did one last like layer of the mistletoe. And so I had an olive green matte in the inner part of the crease, and then the outer part of the crease I had mistletoe. And all, all over the lid I had um, Patina from Cleona. So that was a really beautiful emerald eye look. And another eye look where I focused on the dark matte shades is I had a red eye look where I put stocking the red shade all over the crease, and then I also packed it in with my finger on the eyelid. And then I put Red Giant, um, the multi-chrome that goes from like red to orange to gold, all over the lid on top of stocking. So that was a beautiful red smoky eye. And then in a couple other eye looks, so there was one eye look where I put Slay all over the crease. In that one, I actually used Fairy Light on the outer corner. And because Fairy Light can be made into a bit of a topper, it did kind of turn into like a light silvery blue. It was very beautiful and Slay was really nice in the crease. So we've talked about the formula for the mattes and we went through all the pictures for the smoky eyes I did using these mattes. Now let's go ahead and focus on the shimmer shades. All right, let's get into the shimmers. So I did wash my hand here and I do wanna note this. I don't think these stain the eyelids um, and this is kind of pretty representative of that. Like. The red has a slight, slight tint on the eyelid for like maybe just a couple hours. I don't really notice it. Like it's not so much so that you would need a concealer or something afterwards, you know? 
so they don't really stain that badly but the red leaves a little 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 tint. I do also apply them over a primer, the Urban Decay primer, so that might also be creating a barrier on my eyes. Okay, so now let's go to the shimmers. The first shimmer that we're gonna look at is Jingle Bells. The formula on this is it feels oily. So that's something to keep in mind. It's oilier than any of the other formulas from indie brands that I've tried, like Terra Moons, Cleona, Shine by SD. So this shadow has a warm base and a very kind of silvery neutral shine to it. So it is quite foiled. And I think you can see like the base is quite pigmented. So this is one of those like wet looking eyeshadows on the eyes because it does have a pigmented base that is slightly deeper. So it creates that contrast where you see that wet shine. It's like, this is not a topper. However, one of the also really interesting things about this shade is that it's very transformative, similar to the gingerbread shade. So one thing about this palette that I was kind of thinking that I would have to reach into another palette to fulfill this sort of eye look is if I wanted to do a very cool toned eye look. If I wanted to put Slay all over the lid and then I wanted something like a silver shadow in my collection to go with it, I thought I would have to reach outside of the palette. But actually, and this was like a total surprise to me, I will show you a clip of this on my eyes, but when you have Jingle Bells over Slay, I don't know what it is, I don't know if it's maybe the depth of this eyeshadow, but it completely neutralizes the warm base under Slay. And what ends up happening is just this silver shift shines through, so you it ends up looking like a cool tone shimmer shade. So that was something that was really cool that I thought was like very transformative. So I love that you do have that like cool tone option to go with the blue and the green. Now another thing, let's go to Fairy Light. When I was looking at pictures of Fairy Light online, I thought it was um, like a true white or maybe even a cool tone white. But as you can see here, Fairy Light is more of an ivory white. So if you look really, really close up, it's kind of a mixture of like champagne -y gold sparkles with white sparkles, but they kind of just blend all together to look like an ivory white. So like my first reaction from swatching this shade and putting it on my eyes was that this is like a wedding shade. So it's really, really beautiful. And you can see how foiled these metallics are. But one thing that I do wanna like make sure I say is it's not a white to gold duochrome. So I do have something like that in my collection and I will swatch it during the comparison part. But this is very much like a uniform ivory shade. And as you can see, it also is opaque. Like there is a true base to this, but it can be sheared out and you can just see like the white sparkles if you really shear it out. So right now I'm by natural light, but I'm going to go ahead and turn the light in my room on as well because I feel like that shows the sparkles. So I think now you can see more of the sparkles and... The light in my room is like a kind of white yellow type of light. Now, as you can imagine, these are really nice one shadow all over the eye type of eye looks. So because this was my main palette for the month, when I wanted to like go out and just wear a more casual kind of eye look, I would um, often either reach for Jingle Bells all over the lid or Fairy Lights all over the lid, and then just get a liner brush and just smudge one of these two deep shades on the lash line. So one of the things that I noticed while I was doing this is, I'll throw the um, picture on the screen as well. Because it's this like really like oily texture, I really wanted to just put it on my eyes. So I didn't put a primer underneath because I just really wanted to feel that texture on my lids. But I did notice within just two hours, like I went to lecture and I came back home and already these, this had really really creased on my eyes and I'm not someone who like often notices creasing on my eyelids um, but this was like deep creases like you could see it from far away that there was lines where there wasn't any shadow so I will say I think this really needs a primer even if you don't have oily eyelids 
because yeah, my skin is just normal. It's not oily or dry. So on another day, I did wear this same thing, Fairy Lights Alone, all over the lid. And this time I did use the Urban Decay Primer underneath. And I wore it for even longer, like five hours. And it did not crease. Like maybe there was tiny little lines, but only something you could see with like a camera close up to your face. Like it was really, it didn't crease. So with that being said, I would recommend using a primer with the Shimmer Formula for Glaminatrix, even if you normally don't. It's just good to do that um, so that you don't get any creasing. All right, let's go to the next shade. So we have tinsel. So tinsel, it doesn't have sparkle. It's just like a true foiled metallic. And I actually really love this. Like I'm surprised how much I love this shade. So I was doing an eye look where um, I wanted to, I'll pop that up on the screen, I wanted to have tinsel all over the lid and then I was going to go on top of it with bobbles. I just wanted to see how they would layer. But when I swiped this all over the lid, I was like, there's no way I can put anything else on top of it. It's just so beautiful. <laughs> like I couldn't do that. And I think what's really special about tinsel is that it's so metallic and it goes from like a copper, it's not a duochrome, but the depth of the copper kind of makes it look a little red. So on the outer and inner corner, it just pulls in like this kind of deeper, richer, reddy orange. And when it flashes, it's like this copper, lighter orange. So it just looked really beautiful and it went really well with stocking in the crease. And then I will note in that eye look, I actually had fairy lights in the inner corner and blended a little bit over tinsel in the inner part of the crease and it kind of looks a bit like jingle bells so that's also interesting how like these two kind of create a similar effect as jingle bells okay now let's move on to bobbles I'm sure a lot of you are excited about this we're all multi-chrome lovers here okay right off the bat i do need a note bobbles is a little bit different it's more flaky So the two most dominant shades in this multi-chrome is this like aqua turquoise blue and a really strong pink. So I'm just going to shade the multi-chrome so that you can see. So you can kind of see that pink shift right there. And it goes to like the turquoise, aqua blue. I'm going to actually turn the light off in my room again just because I think you're seeing a lot more of gold because of the light itself, the color of the light itself. So I'm going to turn that off. Okay, yeah, that's better to be able to see the true color. So as you can see here, we have this like pink and it goes to a bluey green. There's also a bit of silver in there. There's like a bit of green. So I think you can see like the neutral shade, there's like the pink, the more neutrally silver shade, there's the green and then the aqua. When I swatch it, it really does look really soft like this, but on the eyes, I feel like the pink really pulls out much stronger. But you can definitely see how the base is more of that like aqua blue base. Now one thing Glaminatrix describes this as a purple, blue, green, pink, gold. And I do see the blue, green, pink, gold, but I don't see the purple. And I think that's what kind of threw me off in the beginning because I actually thought this might be the same iridescent pigment as what's in Lucid Lavender. So we'll compare them in a bit. 
I guess the silver mixing with the pink could be thought of as a purple, but I don't know, would you call that a purple? To me, it's more just a silver and a pink. Compare it to the other iridescent multichromes in my collection in a bit, but now let's just go through the eye looks um, that I did with this. And this is one of the things that I really love about iridescent multichromes is that depending on what color you put them on top of, you can kind of control the shift. So you can make the pink shift more prominent or you can make the blue shift more prominent just by what you put underneath. So what I did was I did a kind of rainbow eye so I put gingerbread in the inner corner and all over the lid. So I'll have a picture just so you can see how all the mats look like. Then I put stocking and then slay and lastly mistletoe. And then without a glitter primer, I actually put this all over the lid because I wanted it to be more dispersed and not packed on to the point where it was like opaque. So by doing that, what was really nice is that you could clearly see that like the pink from bobbles was really emphasized when it was overstocking. The more kind of peachy gold shade was emphasized when it was over gingerbread. And then um, in the outer corner, you really got that vibrant aqua blue green shade. So you really can kind of control an iridescent multichrome in that way. And I love that the one that they included in this palette has the colors of the mattes so that you can actually do that kind of uh, controlling of the shift. Now, one thing that I didn't like that might just be kind of personal preference, but I tried several times, like, the way that Bobbles looks in contrast with Slay is not something that I enjoy because, I don't know, it's something about, like, this super deep, like, just true blue compared to, like, an aqua shade when I have them, and, like, the aqua's on the lid in the outer corner, and then the Slay's on the outer part of, like, the crease. I just feel like it clashes. It's just that I think maybe like Aqua's leaning to yellow and like that contrast isn't going well with Slay. I don't know. It's just that every time I put it on my lid and it was underneath Slay or paired with Slay, I always felt like it was just a little bit off. And then also when I have like a purple, so when I would do the mixing of stocking and Slay, I also didn't like how the Aqua played with the purple. I don't know what it is, <laughs> like I can't even explain it, I'm just it, like telling you my experiences. I didn't like that pairing of the colors and the tones. So I, what I did do in one of the days when I was playing around, ignore the blend, it was not good, that was on me, I was like messing it up and everything, but um, one of the things that I really did like is I put stocking throughout the crease and then I put slay mixed with stocking in the outer corner to make like a purple in the outer corner, and I put bobbles all over the lid so it really was beautiful because it pulled out those like like pinks and greens and oranges and then in the outer corner I actually brought in this multi-chrome that's more of a periwinkle blue and so that mixed in with bobble on the outer corner helped make it more of like this aqua to deeper bluey purple kind of look just at the outer corner of the lid so that it really went well with like the purple in the outer corner of the crease. So that was a nice pairing and honestly I really see myself doing that in the future. If I ever want to pair it with deeper blues or purples, I think I would also bring in a deeper blue or purple type of shimmer to pair on the outer corner. That's just something to keep in mind that if you're a bit struggling to make the look feel right, just pull in like a deeper blue or purple on the outer corner and it It'll work really well. It'll even make it look like your whole lid is a rainbow eye because everything else is in here. It's just that deep like blue or purple is missing. So that really will complete the lid and it'll just look beautiful. So that is another way to play with this shade. So yeah, overall, this Iridescent Multichrome is very beautiful. I do think it reminded me a lot of Lux in the sense that it's a very shifty shadow. So on the lid, you can see two to three shifts from like one angle. And I think that's something that not all multichromes do. Even if they have more than, you know, two shades within the multichrome, often you'll only see like one or two on the lid from a specific angle. 
Whereas with this one and with Lux, I feel like they're the type that you can see at least three shifts. And so I think that's something that's really nice about Bobbles as well. Okay, before we get to the comparisons, I do want to show you Bobbles layered over a black shade. So this is the Marc Jacobs Eyeliner. It's a true black. Okay, I think you can really see the blue, how strong it is in the green, and also like the peach and pink really come out. But yeah, really dimensional shade, that's for sure. Now I'm really curious about the shade comparisons for this, so let's just jump right into that. So this is my Magnetic Palette with all of my multi-chrome single shadows. And I have swatch videos on all of these super in-depth close up pointing out all the shifts. So I will leave the playlist up above. I kind of want to compare this to Aura because of that hot pink. Hmm. This one actually may be a little more purpley than Bobbles. Aura has more of, of a greeny gold. It does have a little touch of blue, but really not much. So it falls more with the greeny gold. And the hot pink in here is stronger. Bobbles is like a softer pink. And then it just goes to like a silvery neutral with blue. So I wouldn't say these are dupes, and if you wanted a hot pink, I would say go with Aura over Bobbles. But then I think Gloaming would be closer, because Gloaming is like a paler pink with a neutral and a silver, and it does go to a more of a blue. So you can see the neutral, the green, and I've done in-depth swatches on these, so that's why I'm not like going too in-depth on them right now, but I think Bobbles and Gloaming are really, really similar. Like they actually look identical. <laughs> it's just that Bobbles has a touch more aqua to it, but as you can see, like it has the same neutral yellow gold shine. Actually, yeah, honestly, like, Bobbles on the lid was really pulling more of a hot pink, but maybe it was because I was layering it over the dark shades. So when I look at it just like this, it's more like gloaming in that it has a soft pink in it. Whereas Aura, like, it doesn't need to be layered over anything. It's a hot pink. Yeah, I think Bobbles and gloaming are really identical. Maybe if I were to just put a blue base, I'm just going to take a little bit of this turquoise blue. And now going in with gloaming over that very sheer layer of a turquoise blue. And yeah, they're identical. <laughs> so I put gloaming, just gloaming itself over a black base. I did a video already where I looked at all of these iridescent multichromes from Cleona over a black base because I was wondering if any of them could dupe the jeweled multichromes and there were a couple so that was a fun video I'll link it up above but yeah so I already looked at gloaming over a black base but I just wanted to see again just to like triple check and as you can see Over a black base, this is identical. <laughs> like, these two are basically the same shade. Yes, this one has a very slight sheer blue when you look at it compared to the iridescent gloaming. But honestly, it's barely just a touch of more blue. As you can see here, like the bases, it's just a little bit more blue. And so it just makes it so that you actually see 
in the pan. There's a slight blue. If you would want them to look identical in the pan, you just add a little bit of a sheer turquoise blue base. And then, yeah, they're the same thing. The last thing I want to swatch um, for comparing to Bobbles is actually Revenge from Shine by SD. Just because when they said it was a purple and in some other swatches online, I was thinking it could be the iridescent form of what's in this shadow. So I just want to swatch it to take a look. Yeah, I don't think that pigment is in here just because, like, looking at Bobbles compared to Revenge, they both have that, like, that blue at, like, an intense angle, but the shift in Revenge is actually a purple. If anything, it reminds me more of Aura. This just leans more into the purple, whereas I really don't see purple in Bobbles. And of course, Revenge is not an iridescent. It has like a deep teal blue base to it. So when I'm comparing it to this deep black base, I just feel like the shifts are very different. Basically, right off the bat, like just if you were to purchase a certain shade, the only one that's really identical to Bobbles would be Gloaming. So just pick either one, you know, depending on price point or um, what brand you're going to purchase from. Because even the formula is kind of similar, like... They're both flaky, sparkly versions of this color shift, so yeah, I feel like you couldn't go wrong with either shade, but you don't need both. Alright, so now let's look at comparisons for the other shades, so I'm just going to wipe off my fingers. Alright, I turned the light back on in my room so you can see some sparkle. And I wanted to do that actually because I want to move on to do some comparisons to Fairy Light. So before I got Fairy Light, I was often using the Fenty Beauty Diamond Balm Highlighter in How Many Carrots as this kind of like topper white shimmery shade. And actually it kind of feels similar in formula to the Glaminatrix. In that it's very like slick. But as you can see, the main difference is that the Glamour Natrix has much more of a white foiled base to it. Whereas the Fenty Beauty is just a highlighter, so there is no base to it. Let me do another swatch to see if we can build it up, just so you guys can see. And the Fenty Beauty is a bit more cool toned, like the sparkle itself is still more cool toned, like against the light, because it's a warm light, it doesn't look like that, but I think you can see like right there, it's much more cool tone of a white than what's in Fairy Lights. Fairy Lights is very much an ivory warm white. So Icicle from Give Me Glow is also not the same as Fairy Lights from Glaminatrix. This one is just a true foil, there isn't the sparkle to it, and it's much more of a true cool tone white. So again, you can see in comparison that the Glaminatrix is more of a warm white. And then lastly, we have from the Huda Beauty Emerald Palette. This is one of those like white to gold kind of shimmers. I mean, it looks really gold here <laughs> next to everything, but it is one of those like white to gold shades. Like you can see, like it goes from a white to a gold. And so this is not that. I just wanted to make sure that that's clear. So yeah, I'm really happy that I have fairy lights right now because I feel like this is what I usually want when I go for more of a topper white shade. And I'll show you it more dispersed because it was a thick swatch. So here is more of a blended swatch of fairy lights. So that is the blended swatch compared to the opaque swatch. So you can really share this out. And it just has this like beautiful sparkly effect to it. Oh, 
All right, so those are all the fairy light comparisons. Honestly, I have nothing like tinsel in my collection, so there's nothing like this fiery copper. <laughs> Um, I have Valentine's Red, but that's a true blue, like, blue tone red, so that's not it. And then when it comes to Jingle Bells, honestly, I don't think I have anything like in my collection. I thought maybe the Urban Decay Half Baked would be similar, but it's really way more gold. And like, there just isn't anything in my collection like this. It's pretty unique in that it has a warm base, like the orange, but then it also has this like, really cool tone silver shift to it. It's just pretty unique to my collection. So yeah, I think in terms of the shimmers, these are the comparisons that I feel like would be helpful. And before we wrap up, I do want to note comparisons for the matte shades. So in this magnetic palette, I have all the shades that I made myself. And if you're new to my channel, I have a make it or buy a series, which means I mix colors in my collection to dupe the eyeshadows, like the exact shades of colors in palettes that I want. So I wanted the Merte palette last summer. And so I duped that palette and as you can see, I got a lot of use out of these like deep red green shades. And that's actually what made me realize it would be a great decision to purchase a Silent Night palette because it had these deep red blue green shades that I really wanted and was missing from my collection and clearly would get quite a bit of use out of. So um, these dupe the Merte shades and so we'll compare them to these, but what I don't expect them to actually be identical. And the reason for that is because Ellie Artistry already did a video swatching these shades from the Silent Night palette next to the Beauty Bay Wilderness palette. And so it's those mats are literally identical. Like if I'll throw up a picture here and I'll link her video down below, but they're literally identical. So basically um, if you have those mats in that palette, I don't think you need this, or if you wanted those mats but you didn't want all the other shades as well, like me, then you could literally just pick up these three shades as, as single shadows from Glaminatrix. So that is one thing to note. Um, so Sherry did that comparison, and then I had previously watched a comparison between the Wilderness palette and the Merte palette in Amy Loves Makeup's video. And basically these ones or the Wilderness palette are more brighter than the Merte palette. So the ones in the Merte palette are a little bit more muted. Like the blue is a little bit more of a muted blue, not as a, as strong of a vibrant blue. And the green is more of a, a little bit tealy, murkier green. And the red is, it, the red especially, I think that's the biggest difference. Their reds in the Merte palette are more, much more of the blackened reds. So I'll just do swatches here anyways, just so that we can see, but I don't anticipate these colors to be exactly the same. Yeah, so I would say these are, again, more muted, and this one more brown tone in the Merte palette, and even this one a little bit deeper than the bright red here. But to be honest, I'm pretty happy with these. Like, I don't think I'm going to need to make the green or the blue again um, once I run out of these, but I think the reds, because they just lean a little bit more, like, grungy, a little more brown, a little more burgundy, I might actually mix these reds again. But yeah, I feel very happy to now have like a large pan of the green and the blue so I can just use as much as I want from it in all my eye looks. Okay, so those are the comparisons that I wanted to make, the matte shades and the shimmer shades. So for my final closing thoughts before we wrap up, I did want to mention that when I got my Silent Night palette, it did arrive, and you may have already noticed that Slay has like a huge chunk missing here. It did arrive um broken so this was the packaging when it arrived and as you can see the blue was like all over the place so i reached out to glaminatrix and i asked them like what is the policy like are you able to replace this like blue shade and um the owner was incredibly sweet super responsive and she basically uh, not only said she would replace this but also said that um because in the picture you could see that when slay had broken it kind of got into some of the other shades um, and she asked, like, is Bobbles okay? Like, do you need me to replace Bobbles as well? 
And that was just super sweet to me. Like that was her taking an extra step. Like that was very kind. And I was thankfully able to just blow off some of the powder that was on top of bubbles, so it was fine. But the blue did get into um, Jingle Bells. And as you saw, because Jingle Bells can change with the slightest amount of this pigment, the top layer was actually like mixed in and it was just not good. So I had to scrape off the whole top layer of Jingle Bells. Um, and so I just, when I told her that though, she said, okay, she's, she will replace Jingle Bells and Slay for me. And the thing is, when these were sent to me, the palette was wrapped in like one layer of bubble wrap. Like it wasn't wrapped several times. It was just like one layer and the palette could actually slip in and out of the bubble wrap. So I mentioned that as well in my email. Um, and she said that because it was the holidays, she had some temporary hires that were doing some of the packaging and she likes to add a lot of bubble wrap but it seemed like they may have missed that. So I wouldn't say that's actually something standard of Glaminatrix if you're planning to order from them but clearly even when there's a mistake that is made Glaminatrix you know was very kind in how they responded and um, they're willing to replace these two shades. And what's really nice about this palette is these are just magnetized, so I can pop them up out. I can put different shades in here as well. Now, with that all being said, she's a one-woman team. So, again, this is not against her at all. Um, I did end up receiving these two shades. So, I didn't end up getting Slay. She ended up sending these two. I didn't, I didn't like, email her back or anything like that. She's a one-woman team. She's doing her best, and honestly... I don't want her to send Slay again because already she covered for two shadows and shipping to Canada and I'm just like, I, I couldn't ask again for Slay. So I'll probably like repurchase Slay when I, you know, run out of it. I'm totally fine with that. Um, but yeah, just wanted to show you that she was very responsive. It was great customer service. I got the, I got two shades <laughs> and these two shades actually came very well packaged, like lots of the packaging peanuts, lots of bubble wrap, like these these arrived really well. So um, yeah, overall I just want to share a bit of that customer experience. I also feel like what I love about Glaminatrix is, um, especially if you know me on my channel, I like smaller pans and she actually does release, she's released previous palettes as like normal pan sizes like this and then even smaller pan sizes, not 15 millimeters, but I think it was like 20 millimeters. So I think that's really nice that she's really listening to the community. Um, recently, she also is doing better in terms of being inclusive and having swatches on a range of skin tones. So overall, I just feel like Glaminatrix is like a great brand to support. And I really love this product. Like I'm really happy that I picked this up. I feel like it has a really special place in my collection. It gives me these deep tones that I didn't have. Um, and there's just these beautiful neutral shades that I honestly could see myself using up. But yeah, overall, I just feel like the formula has been great. I recommend using a primer. I like that the mattes are buildable. Um, I love her color stories. Oh my gosh, she's like, like, you know the, the kind of excitement we used to all get as a community over ABH releases because their color stories were like so groundbreaking and different than anything else that was coming out? That is how I feel about Glaminatrix. Like when they came out with the UV palette, it just it was just a phenomenal color story and the way all the colors work together and the pairings, it's just so easy to use. The way everything blends together just gives you so much more versatility than you'd expect. And like even I was watching Hannah Louise Poston's recent video and she was talking about how like there are the current like color stories that everyone's releasing and then how like she tried to put Glaminatrix Nocturnal palette as part of it, but really, like, it was just so, like, far above. Like, it was such, like, a heightened version of what was coming out. And honestly, that palette is so beautiful. So, yeah, I am looking forward to all her new releases. I hope she releases Nocturnal in 20 millimeter pans. I think I would be a little more tempted to purchase it then. It just looks really big right now. <laughs> so, I feel like I'd be a little overwhelmed. But that color story, I mean, like, Come on, it's the grungy olives, it's mustard, and periwinkle. Like, like I feel like she makes the palettes I, I would personally make. Like, they're just my dream palettes. So, yeah. Overall, I'm super happy that I tried the brand. I know I'll be picking up more in the future. And, yeah, I'm just excited to see with what else she comes out with. And 
that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. If it helped you, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, swatching eyeshadows, talking about different multi-chrome formulas, um, making, you know, multi-chromes by mixing different formulas, I hope you do subscribe. And that's it. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.